In this video, I'm going to run through an example on how you can get set up with the new Gemini series of models, including Gemini Flash and Gemini Pro, and how you can leverage that huge context window of up to a million tokens. I'm going to show you how to upload audio, video, images, and text all within one query. Before I get into that, first I want to dive into Gemini Flash itself and why it's really interesting. This is a model that allows you to have up to a million tokens of context while also adding in all of those different file types. Within that million tokens of context, this can be videos, like I mentioned, this can be audio, this can be images. The thing that's interesting is being able to pass in all of these different modalities at once, you can have these different use cases that are pretty interesting, right? So you can ask it to compare different things between say the video and the images or compare the different images or what have you. The possibilities by being able to have native support for all of these different modalities within one model is really powerful. Just to give you an idea of how many tokens this is. So there's a really good example on the DeepMind website here. This is about an hour of video, 11 hours of audio, code bases with more than 30,000 lines of code or over 700,000 words. Just to give you an idea, I was playing around with this and just a text input I passed in essentially the entire HTML document of what's known as an S1 filing. And this got pretty close to the million tokens of context. And this document is about 300 pages long. And you're able to ask very specific questions with this, whether it's with the Gemini 1.5 Pro model or the Gemini Flash model. The one thing that I do wanna note is if you're pushing the token context window is the responses are gonna be very slow. But the thing that I found interesting with this is say if you have background processes where if you're just passing in these long documents and maybe the latency isn't a huge factor, you can just have all these documents maybe being summarized in the background. And the thing with this is you don't have to worry about setting up any retrieval augmented generation. Now, the other thing that really stands out and what a lot of people were excited about were the pricing of the model. So one of the flagship pricing metrics that came out from the announce was this 35 cents per million tokens of context that you can pass in. So while this pricing is extremely competitive, there's also a free tier where you can pass in that million tokens of context per minute. So you can break up that million tokens per minute into 15 requests per minute and ultimately 1500 requests per day. The trade-off is this is going to be used to actually improve their products, whether that means training their models or what have you, you can learn more here if you'd like. But it's really nice that it gives you that option if you're just looking to play around with this or explore it as a potential option without having to incur any costs. In terms of some other resources, if you just want to try this out, you can go on over to aistudio.google.com and you can just have this little playground here where you can play around with the models. Within here, you have the Gemini 1.5 Flash model with a million tokens of context as well as the Gemini Pro model. And then you can also just grab your API key by clicking this button here. Now, in terms of the actual coding portion, I'm gonna run through this relatively quickly and I'll also throw it up on GitHub if you just wanna pull it down and get started with it. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and import a couple modules. What you'll have to do is you'll have to go ahead and NPM these two packages. You can either use bun or NPM or PMPM or whatever you're using. So you can just bun I this and then you can paste in the subsequent string here as well. Once you have that, we're going to be using the path module since we're going to be reaching for a few different files within our directory. We're going to be setting up an API key. What you can do here is you can go ahead, grab that API key from the Generative AI Studio, and then you can put it within your API key with the Gemini API key, just like this. Just Gemini API key equals right within that .env and save it out. From there, we're gonna go ahead and establish that we are gonna be using the Google AI file manager, which is gonna be how we upload these files. And then we're gonna be using the generative AI package and we're gonna be passing in our API key here. So all that this function is doing is we're gonna be passing in the file name as well as the MIME type. So for each file, a MIME type, if you're not familiar, this is going to be what the type of file is. So say if it's a type of PDF or if it's a type of MP4 or what have you, that's gonna be what the MIME type is. A simple little function here and all that this is doing is we're going to be uploading that file to Google before we actually process that request for inference. Within the next step here, what we're gonna be doing here is essentially we're gonna be waiting for all of those files have been successfully uploaded. Since these files can be really big, if you're uploading a whole movie or something like that, all that this is really doing is checking whether those files in the previous step were uploaded. Within their documentation, they have this while loop where it's essentially looking to see if the files have been processed, if they're processed, continue on to the next step. 
it's just going to go ahead and check that at a particular interval here. From there, this is going to be where we configure our generative model. And the one thing that I did want to point out is that the system instructions are a little bit different within the Gemini API than something like the OpenAI API. So you will have to set up these system instructions right when you configure the generative model here. And if you want to swap it out for the Gemini 1.5 Pro model, you can also swap out the model string here as well. From there, there's a number of optional configurations that you can pass in when you're actually invoking that chat. We're just going to declare some of the optional values that we're going to be passing into the model. You don't have to specify these, but just to give you an idea on how you can do it. From there, we're going to set up a simple run function, which is going to be what wraps our entire application. The first thing that we're going to do is I have four different file types here. I have an image of a simple spreadsheet. I have an image of two cameras. I have a simple audio file. And then I also have a simple video file of the earth spinning. These are going to be the files that we upload and then send in for inference. What we're going to be doing for each of these files is we're going to upload the files. The arguments that the upload to Gemini function takes is the file name as well as the MIME type like we had talked about. Then from there, we're going to wait for all the files to be complete. Once that's done, we're going to start our chat session. In this example, this is a chat interface, and there are some particular rules that you do have to follow to set this up. Within our chat session, all that we have to do to pass in all of these different modalities within our input is we have to declare that the role is going to be user and you cannot pass in a system message as the first message or within this at all for that sake. You do have to put the system message within where you configure the generative model here. It's not like OpenAI where you pass in the system message as your first message. The other thing to note with this, just as an aside, you can't pass in a model message as the first message within the history array here. So long as you follow that, all that you have to do to add in file types within your input is you can just specify them within the parts array here. You can go ahead, pass in audio, we'll pass in a couple images, we'll pass in a video, and that's it. We're passing in the file data, we're passing in the MIME type, and then the file URI. And then from there, you can go ahead and query it. In this case, I'll ask, describe me the spreadsheet here, which is image one. We have a very rudimentary spreadsheet here. I set it up so you can see the number of tokens that you are using. We're using about 11,000 tokens of contact. And then within the response here, we see the spreadsheet shows exam results from four students. We can see that we do have four students and it's breaking it down, right? We have Carol, John, Eden, and James and all of the different subjects. Pretty amazing. If I ask another question and I say, what is this video about? and I go ahead and I run this. Again, it's going to upload all of those different files. And the one thing that I did want to point out is if you do want to swap this out to the pro model, all that you have to do is change flash to pro here within the model string, save out the file, and then you can see what the pro model responds. Here we see that the video is a time-lapse of the earth at night. It was really nailing these. So it is doing really well with these questions, but if I try with the pro model and I say, describe in great detail, all of these images, videos, and audio. And if I go ahead and I run that, the one thing to note with the Pro model is it's about 10 times the price of the Flash model, but there is also a free tier. We can pass in up to 32,000 tokens of context per minute where you can use this Pro model for free. So within the example, we saw that we're using about 11,000 tokens of context. If I just put in another message and I say, describe in detail the differences between everything I passed in, and then we just try and run that. What it's going to do here is hopefully give me a good depiction of the differences between all of these different files. And so we have images, we have audio, and then we also have that video. So here it's asking for clarifying questions, which within a chat application, this can be really helpful. So I'm going to throw this up on GitHub. You can go ahead and play around with this. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.